Welcome back to The Communicator. I'm Jeff Hostetler. I'm Chris Hartley. And in this episode, we're going to talk about digital and voice over IP system, phone systems. Uh, really, the, those are the most prevalent ones that we actually see in the, in the uh, market today. And really, when it comes to choosing one over the other, it becomes a matter of preference. However, we're going to talk about some things where each one of them shines in their own respect and what you need to do when you're figuring out which one would actually be good for your business. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is talk about digital systems. Now, that's the older of the two scenarios. And in front of me today, I've got a digital set and a voice over IP set. And the first one we're going to talk about is digital set. Now, it, like I said, it is the older of the two, and it utilizes separate cables. Now, typically what you see on the side of an office wall, you may see a, a network cable and a phone cable, and that's traditionally what you have when you're looking at a digital phone environment. And it has the one cable in the back for the connection. Uh, back to a phone room. Typically, the phone room is within the computer room, but sometimes the phone room is outside of the computer room, so you have separate uh, separate environments. Uh, the cables are then punched down onto a punch block, and then they're moved over uh, into the system. Uh, really, when you're looking at that, what kind of features are you looking for? Now, really, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, but essentially when you've got both digital and voice over IP systems, uh, really what it comes down to is what you want features. If you're just looking for just straight dial tone, I want to be able to pick up the phone, make the calls, answer the calls, maybe get voicemail, then really a digital system would probably be for you. Um, also, who can support it? Uh, and really, when I was explaining before about the cable going back to the phone room, is that uh, either your IT staff or somebody there at your organization needs to be familiar with how to, how to punch down a digital set because uh, as moves and changes become a little bit more difficult. No, it's more not of a, a physical move. That's more of a physical move. So that person has to be um, uh, versed in that, in that technology, being able to do that kind of stuff. Now, typically those people uh, end up outsourcing those uh, uh, environments where they don't have that expertise and they usually take care of small offices especially. That's really pretty big. And some organizations prefer the separation of the voice and data platforms where they like to keep the voice separate from the data and they don't want to merge the two together. Uh, so those are some environments where digital plays very, very well. And in your smaller environments, you, know, you just want to be able to, like I said, pick up the phone, have dial tone. You know, like I said, maybe the voicemail. There's a lot of organizations we work with where they just don't have voicemail. Digital sets tend to be a, a great, great fit. The next is voice over IP. Now, voice over IP, of course, is younger. However, it has been in the market for some time. Now, this is a, a voice over IP phone, and in the back, there's actually two ports. Uh, and the, where this comes into play is you can actually share the computer port uh, with the phone and the computer. So from the wall, it just takes one cable into the phone and out from the phone to the computer. So back, in, and I'll explain that just a little bit later, but back in the switching room, uh, the switch actually houses the two. So, uh, but what makes it real easier is that it is a um, single cable can be able to handle that. So cabling in a new environment, you don't have to do two cables per location. You can't do one, especially if you're going to go the voice over IP route. Uh, as moves and changes become a lot easier, uh, usually those interfaces, of course you can get that with the digital system, but interfaces are usually done on uh, web interfaces. But also, this is basically a computer. It is another node on the network, so you're able to actually move this. So if somebody was moving, let's say Sally was moving down to offices, she could unplug the phone, plug it back into the network uh, that's in her new office and it'll follow her. It'll get that information because like I said it has a, an address on the back of it called a MAC address and that MAC address ties it to an IP address which ties to this phone. So cabling's less uh, easier, less expensive, the admin is much easier. Now where the concern actually comes in is back at the, at the, uh, the server area, the core area where all these switches come in. Now earlier in this last episode of the communicator what we talked about was power over Ethernet. These phones actually don't have a power supply associated with them, or this one doesn't in particular. So back in the switch room, you've got to have the, the ability to have uh, power uh, over Ethernet switches. You need to have power injectors or the mid-span switch that we were referring to. So if you catch the last episode that we had done over power over Ethernet, we explained how that works. Uh, also associated with that is the, you've got to be able to have a switching environment that gives the voice the priority. If you happen to just plug it in and not work with that, it's probably it's called quality of service or QoS is something that's been talked about in the industry. You've got to be able to give voice priority. Now these switches will have the capabilities of giving high, higher priority to voice versus say web traffic where you're just you know, scanning the web. So anytime uh, a switch actually sees this, uh, voice traffic versus web, it gives it priority. Otherwise you're going to have... Uh, 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 
basically you're tuning a radio Dallas, what you end up listening to. It garbles, it's jittery, and uh, just won't work in an environment. Now, when you're surfing the web, zeros and ones can be resent, but certainly not in voice. So the preference is, when setting up voice RP, is to VLAN that off uh, for the voice side just to keep it protected. Right. Well, that it, that's certainly for a, another discussion in, in uh, networking. Or in depth. But, uh, but usually with those uh, switches, that they can certainly carve those off in VLANs or virtual lines that we were talking about. And uh, also given that quality service priority. Uh, so that, that's another topic for another communicator we're certainly going to talk about. So I know we talked about QoS and we talked about power requirements that are back at the switch. So even if you go with a voice over IP system, which like we had said, admin becomes a lot easier along with cabling and the ability to do moves as and changes that we had that we had discussed. You do have power requirements that you've got to take into effect and you also have switching requirements such as power or ethan of the switch if you want to do that, quality of service and being able to do VLANs and certain network topologies. So our network uh, requirements as far as that's concerned. Uh, great thing about both of these is a lot of them have a lot of similar uh, environments with the uh, features. So if you want to be able to do Unified communications, even in the digital environments, you're able to bring uh, your voicemail to email, uh, and you can do other other situations like that. So uh, that, in a nutshell, are two areas that we can look at when you're concerning yourself with digital and voice over IP environments. Chris, do you have any questions? Uh, one question: What do you do when there's, um, uh, say, you had a, a bunch of uh, analog stations uh, in a uh, Digital environment, I know a lot of those, you, you can get cards, you can get different things. How do you, you integrate that to the IP solution that had a lot of it? If you had a situation you had 10 or 15 or 20, uh, like in a, in a college dorm or something, you had a lot of analog stations, how do you incorporate that into an IP? Well, there's actually several things you can do. Most of the manufacturers have taken analog into, into uh, to consideration. This in particular is a short tail phone system, and they have a device which actually is called a 24A where it handles 24 analog stations. They also partner with organizations that have uh, analog capabilities, such as the Audio Codes or Mediatrix are two companies that they work with that give the audio capabilities, I mean, I'm sorry, the, <coughs> analog. the analog capabilities, but they talk SIP, uh, the SIP uh, protocol, back to the switch that allows the short tail and the audio codes to, to talk. So it's analog to, to the sort of um, a middleman box and then IP back out. A good, a good example would be a fax machine, credit card machine, that type of thing in, in the analog in, environments and then it able to do to that audio codes box I was referring to and then it comes back out a SIP to, to short tail where it actually joins the network. So uh, you can either look at it from a manufacturing standpoint from the same uh, vendor that does the IP environments versus a third party that usually these organizations and you had you were right regarding a digital system where it has, usually has digital and analog cards that are built into the digital uh, digital telephone system so okay all right and with that we certainly hope that you have a good luck in selecting either a digital voice over IP system or whatever you need to be for your office so with that as for Chris and myself thank you very much thank you